Thank you all for joining us for the Pitt post-game press conference. We are now joined by head coach Pat Narduzzi. Coach, if you want to start with an opening statement, and then we'll open up for questions. Okay. Well, obviously not the way we wanted to finish up the season, and you know, um, it's never easy. Um, you know, kids played their tails off. Didn't you know? Didn't give up at all. Um, I think when most people thought you know with the third string quarterback we weren't going to be able to take it down the field, we did. And uh, comes down to the details, and, and uh, you know, um, you know, you throw a pick in the red zone when 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 you got a chance to at least tie it up and go overtime. Um, you know, you just got to protect the ball, make better better decisions. But uh, you know, it hurt obviously when Nick Patty went down, and um, you know, had a nice touchdown. You know, scramble uh, for a touchdown, but uh, you know, just you know, not the way you wanted your seniors to go out. So uh, I'm opening up for questions. We'll go ahead first to Christopher Carter. Pat, uh, can you talk to about uh, what, what all went into the preparation for Davis? You know, you go in the week, you guys talked a lot about how Nick was making a lot of things seamless, but I imagine there had to be a lot of preparation to put into Nick and not as much time to put into Davis. How did you think he responded to that challenge? You know, he did about as good as he could. He, you know, obviously, you know, he got the two reps and he got probably, I would say, you know, 80, 80% of the two reps and, um, you always got to prepare for the next guy too. So Joey Yellen got reps as well. Um, but, uh, um, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you're preparing to have a backup that hadn't had a you know, start. And I don't know how many, someone said 840 days since he started a game and played, uh, played a you know, bunch of reps. Uh, so, you know, it obviously hurt when, you know, when he went down and our kids hung in there and, you know, we got a chance to win the ball game with, you know, a minute to go in the game or at least tie the ball game. Um, you know, we were just on the field too long defensively. We lost the time possession by, you know, over 10 minutes. Um, I think it was, a, you know, a 16 play drive. I think, you know, they had a 16 play to 13 yard uh, play drive uh, to get those last two touchdowns, which hurt. You hope your defense is going to stop them. But, uh, you know, I just, we just weren't fresh enough and uh, didn't make enough plays on defense to get off the field. So, uh, you know, it's, it's what it is. Please raise your hand if you have a question. We'll go to Dan Tortora next. Coach, just what you can say about Davis Bevel, just what he was able to do. I mean, looking at a, a third string quarterback who was able to lead you all the way down and get you in field goal range and had completed all his passes up until that interception there on that drive. Just what he's done in this game to showcase what he can be. Yeah, I mean, you know, we didn't do a great job protecting him, you know, in the third quarter, I don't think. Um, you know, we'll go back and look what happened there. Uh, so I wasn't happy, obviously, with the protection, what our line did. Um, you know, so, you know, until you watch the tape, you really don't know. Um, but, you know, Davis did a great job. I mean, you know, as good as you expect a third team quarterback to do, wasn't good enough to win the football game. Um, but, uh, you know, our guys hung in there and, and played their tails off for him. And uh, we just didn't make enough plays in, in all phases. So it doesn't, it doesn't ever lie with one guy or one quarterback. Um, you know, you need guys around you playing better. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't get that done today. Go ahead, Johnny McGonigal. Yeah, Pat, um, how big of a loss was it uh, losing Izzy as well in the running game when you have a backup in Nick and then, you know, a third stringer in Davis to be able to hopefully lean on a running game? Yeah, we got, you know, definitely banged up. And, you know, Izzy was obviously a big part of the game plan. He's fast. He's physical. Uh, he's the starter. And, you know, that didn't help us either. Um, so, you know, but again, Vince has had a, a ton of reps and, um, and so has Rodney. So. Um, that's, that's why you work them all year round. You know, you, you never know when you're going to be down to one guy uh, or two guys. So, you know, that wasn't the factor. Um, but obviously, you'd like to see Izzy be able to finish the game. We'll go to Chris Solari, followed by Alan Cole. Hey, Pat, I'm wondering what you, what you saw in that fourth quarter uh, from Peyton Thorne and Jaden Reed in particular and the place those guys made in the passing game. Um, you know, they made plays and they converted, I think, 50 percent of third down, which is usually not us. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go we'll back and look at the coverage and, um, you know, maybe maybe an exhausted secondary. I don't know. Um, we'll look at it. But we didn't make enough plays back there. Obviously, not having Damari Mathis, it was a factor. I mean, he's your starting corner. He's your best corner. That was also a factor. So some younger guys were, were out there. And again, we'll look at the, You know, we'll look at it. Um, but uh, I mean, you, you look at whatever we held him to, 24 points. Um, you know, it was a solid day, but, you know, not good enough to, to win against a good team. Go ahead, Alan. Uh, at the end of a game like that and after a season like this, you know, it's been so historic for the program. What's the message to your team just kind of after the way it ended like that? 
you know, it's never, it's never easy. I mean, you know, at the end, it won't be easy, you know, for, for two teams, you know, tomorrow when we're playing in a playoff game, you know, someone's going to lose and you have a great season like that and get to the playoffs. So it's never easy. Um, but, uh, you know, we got a lot coming back and, um, you know, we'll be looking, you know, we'll start to work tomorrow towards an ACC championship for next year. And that's, that's the goal. Uh, that's the standard that, that we have. And, um, you know, it's not easy, but that's, that's the ball game. And, you know, we haven't lost for a while and our kids uh, have a lot of confidence. Um, so it hurts, you know, they're, they're hurt in there. They're frustrated and uh, a lot of tears in that locker room. So uh, they care and, and they fought. Go to Christopher Carter. Hey, Pat, just wanted to talk about the defense. You mean they put on a, an inspired performance early on, getting a touchdown, creating turnovers. But you saw late in there, like you were talking about, it looked like they, they were able to connect on some, but it seemed like a lot of theirs were tight throws into tight coverages. You know, you know, MJ was 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 up on his man. Uh, the pass, to, the touchdown to Hayward was between two guys. Did you feel like it was more of a just they were making great plays, or were there communication breakdowns that you thought were happening? There was one one communication when uh, Hayward caught a ball out in the, in the uh, you know in the flats where we were playing man free. So that, that's the only one uh, miscommunication. Safety gave him the wrong call. Um, and, uh, that was the one miscommunication, but again, you know, you give them credit. They made, you know, Hayward had a heck of a catch in the end zone and, and, uh, you know, it was a heck of a throw and catch on the end. And, you know, you got a guy in coverage, you, you know, you gotta make a play. That's what it comes down to. You gotta make a play and, um, you know, you know, MJ's hurt in there as well. Um, but you know, he'll only get better, you know, uh, for 2022. Go ahead. Back to Dan Tortora. Coach, just so you can say, you made a mention on the way to, you know, fighting for another ACC championship. You've had two shots at the ACC championship in the last few seasons and, and got your first for Pittsburgh this year. Just what you can say about where this team is, where, where the state of the program is, that you're vying for ACC championships and you're able to reel one in this year. Yeah, Dan, I mean, you know, like I said to the team afterwards, you know, I'd love every one of those guys in there. They fought their tails off. I'd go to war with them any, any day. You know, there's never been any quit, and uh, you know, um, the, the, you know that's the plan. It takes it takes years to get what we got, and we got a championship now. You know, now we got to try for a repeat. So uh, we got a good football team. We got a lot of guys coming back, and uh, we'll just work on the next. Jerry DePaula, go ahead. Uh, Pat, could you uh, uh, share with us the, the nature of uh, Nick's injury? Yeah, I guess the season's over. You know, broke broke a collarbone. Um, and uh, which is our third one this year, um, just, you know, freak accident, I guess. I mean, it's what happens when you hit the ground a little bit odd. Um, so um, he'll, he'll get that fixed tomorrow. And um, he wanted to go back and play. And it was like, you know, our doctors weren't going to let that happen. He's going to have surgery then? Yes, Jerry. I'll give that to you at the end, Mr. Injury. Chris Peak. Um, you uh, talked about some of the younger players, maybe some guys you got to look at. Dayon Hayes had, I think, three tackles for loss in this game. Seemed pretty active and maybe the most playing time he's gotten all season. What do you, uh, what'd you think of what you saw to him? Dayon did a nice job. You know, Deslin, Deslin didn't play, obviously. You guys saw that. And, then uh, you know, he got injured during the week and bowl practice out here. Um, he's okay, but, um, you know, just was risky to put him out there. Um, so, you know, it was just being safe. And, you know, I know he was disappointed, but, um, when you look at, you know, that's why Dayon got more plays and Dayon's going to be an outstanding player for us. He's only going to keep getting better. Uh, he's smart, he's athletic, and, uh, there's, there's a lot of good football for Dayon Hayes in the future. I don't see any other hands raised. Do we have any final questions for coach? Looks like Alan. Go ahead, Alan Cole and Dan Tortora. Uh when you have an injury like the one Nick suffered, especially so early in the game, how does that kind of change the environment on the sideline um, when, you're, when you're in the middle of that and you've put so much preparation into him? Does it change the mood when it's that early in the game or is it still just kind of plugging away? Yeah, I think our kids plugged away. I mean, we, you know, um, you know, I, I don't think they bat an eye. We, you know, we just didn't get things going. And again, it's tough. It's not easy. Um, but our kids battled. I mean, you, you look at playing with the third string quarterback and we took him to the end. Um, and you know, you, you would love to see what would happen if Nick would play that whole game, but, uh, you know, it's not easy. Go ahead, Dan, and then Johnny McGonigal. So it's just what you can say about Jordan Addison. I mean, he was there with you at ACC kickoff at the beginning of the season, what you saw from him going into the season and then him 
all the way through this season, how you've seen him uh, develop. Has he somehow, some way even exceeded your expectations? You know, I would say so. Um, you know, um, you know, Jordan Addison is an outstanding player. I mean, I don't know what hasn't been said about him, you know, winning a Blitnikoff. Um, wish he'd had more than seven catches. Probably should have got him the ball more. Just couldn't get it to him enough. Um, in the second half, the plan was just to have Davis hey, look to find number three and throw it to him. Um, let him go make a play. And, uh, you know, we started off with a couple drops, I think, you know, weren't easy catches. Um, but, you know, Jordan had a great game, had a nice reverse and, um, you know, didn't get our return game going with him. But Jordan Addison is a spectacular football player and um, he's going to have a big 22 season as well. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Coach Narduzzi, you guys allowed five sacks this year. You guys allowed a lot of pressure. I know there were a lot of moving pieces on the offensive line. Gabe got hurt and everything, but what, with that whole group, that, that whole group's coming back next year. They've obviously announced that. What do you say to a group like that where they've had such a great year and then they kind of end this one on a bit of a downer? What can you say for them as they kind of work towards next year? You know what? You know, grab, you know, probably every one of those guys, you know, they're disappointed. I don't think they played as good as they needed to. And, um, you know, we'll look at the tape and find out what happened, where it was. But there was a lot of just four man pressure. It wasn't a lot of uh, blitzing going on. I don't think a lot of those were four man pressures and we just didn't execute well enough. Um, but, uh, you know, they know that. And, um, you know, when you're playing with a second and a third string quarterback, that line's got to step up and play better than they did. Take two more, Dalton and then Craig, and then we'll wrap it up. Pat, towards the end of the game, you guys had an opportunity to put that game away really on that uh, second to last possession on offense. And then on third down, you guys ran that uh, pitch play. Uh, how involved were you in that play call? And would you have, uh, would you change your mind if you could? You know, we, we can all second guess, um, you know, it was, a, it was a check based on, you know, what they were giving us. Uh, we could have checked and ran a, a power play. We flipped what we call flip it out there. And, um, you know, they played it well. We didn't execute it good enough. And, um, you know, what are you going to do? And again, Craig, I'm, not, I'm, not, you know, I'm not involved in play calls. I don't, I don't go second guess and I don't second, second guess a play caller. I don't, you know, that's not, that's not me. So Final question for Craig Meyer. Hey, Pat, uh, there's a report out that Texas is set to hire Brennan Marion. I don't know if as a coach, or, uh, you know, I was curious if you've been informed of any decision on his part. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I was focused on, you know, this football team and the guys that want to be with us. Uh, when you got good coaches, people are going to come after them. And uh, guys have decisions to make. And, and uh, you know, whatever he wants to do, I'm good. We'll be, we'll be fine.